An error occurred with your output. Please check your stream. Testing, check. Oh, says I'm live. If anybody's out there, how's it going? Just getting thing getting things set up here. Can y'all see me? Anybody there? What's up, Michael? How's it going? I wonder if I can type back to you guys. Oh, nice. Sign in the chat. I'm here. Here we are. I'm still getting used to the uh, whole streaming setup. Can see and hear you. Very cool. Well, let's... Uh, Let's make sure the guitar works. So this is what we got. I'm just gonna dive right in because it's late where I am. I, where are you guys at? Where y'all from? I'm over here in Eastern United States, North, North Carolina. So it's 9.30 here, 9.33 or 9.37, whatever clock I'm looking at. Steven, what's up, man? Looks good, sounds good, in focus, very cool. I have a couple different shots here. Um, Chicago-ish. That's cool. Never been there. I flew in there one time, uh, but I never left the airport. It was snowing. East Pennsylvania. Nice. Very cool. I had to uh, a pick a late, a later time because um, i got to put my kids to bed. You know, you know what I mean? Georgia, Utah, Alaska. Wow. What time is it in Alaska right now, Caleb? So this is my other setup right here. And uh, it's not as clear because this is not a 4K shot. And I hope it's in, in focus. But um, we have the mother of all signal chain flow here. So what we have here, I'm coming out of my guitar into the HX effects, leaving that mono, going into the Stomp XL, leaving that stereo, going into the HX Stomp, and I'll tell you what's set up on all these here in a second. And then leaving that stereo, and last in the chain is the Helix LT. That's a lot of HX. It is a lot of HX. Um, yes, it is. It's a lot. So I'll tell you why I have all this stuff, because um, I wasn't in the, in the market to get all of it, but... Um, uh, some guy I was looking to get so I did a coaching call I do I do coaching for for those of you who don't know um, and uh, I was doing a coaching call with somebody who had DHX Stomp XL and I was on uh, FaceTime with them and we were you know building a preset together and and uh, and then I noticed that he was like oh I was telling him something to do with the menus and he's like oh the menus aren't the same and I was like oh that's not good I've, I've never actually had the XL in hand I just assumed it would be the same uh, and it wasn't exactly, they're very similar. So I thought, man, I need to have one cause, um, I want to help people. And if y'all know, maybe you don't know, I am, I've been working on the idea of, uh, building a course, helping people. Cause I get messages all the time. Somebody asking me like, Oh, how do I route this? If I want to do this, how do I do this? And I thought, man, it would be cool if we had like a, an all in one stop shop, uh, without having to sit through YouTube ads and all that stuff. Uh, a systematic approach to how to build presets and stuff like that. So um, many of you might already know about that. Uh, I meant to put a link in this video, but I ran out of time and I forgot. But um, there are some other videos. But anyways, there's a, there's a link to a free preset and you can actually go fill out a survey that's helpful for me uh, when I'm thinking about building this, this course. So and then uh, anyway, so I was getting the XL. He gave me a good deal and he's like, hey, I got some other I got some other items if you're interested. I was like, no, not interested. What do you got? <laughs> and um, and so he was like, well, I have a uh, another HX Stomp, um, which is good because this is not the one that's on my board. Where's my board? Over here. As you guys know, I like work really hard to, you know, put all this together. And so I don't like ripping it apart all the time just to do like a little top down shot. So I wanted another HX Stomp and uh, got the Stomp XL and he was like, hey, I also have a uh, HX effects and an LT I'm trying to get rid of. He was going to the uh, fractal, fractal stuff 
and he's like, man, if you buy it all, I'll give you a super good deal. And I just, I couldn't pass it up. So, um, I got it all. So now I can like have hands on stuff. And so the main reason, uh, the other reason I wanted to get all these is because, um, a lot of people have enjoyed the expanse pack that I, uh, have over on the website. You can click the link in the description. If you're interested what it is, it's a, a collection of presets that I always update. So you pay one time. It's not like a subscription. You just pay one time and then you get, uh, updates for free for life. And so I update it around once a month. Um, I haven't updated it in a little bit longer because what I've been doing recently, and here's the big announcement is that I have now made the expanse pack for all of these. So I think it was like a couple weeks ago. I was like, Hey, I got it for the HX stomp XL now, but some people uh, were like, Hey, when are we going to get the expanse for the, the helix? So it's there. You can click the website and uh, go check it out. It's, it's there right now. So, um, I, uh, and, and because the Helix has more DSP, um, I included more to the preset and a couple other things. So go check that out. If you have an LT went from the LT to a stomp and pod go happy with that decision. That's awesome. With that HX effect, you have a reason to keep some of those Westminsters now. That's right. And actually today, so I wanted, I just want to tell you the HX effects, um, I dialed them all in um, through my headphones and then with my uh, studio monitors using the HX Stomp as amp only and they sound amazing and so then I was like well I wonder what it would sound like through an actual amp so today I brought my Blues Junior it's sitting over there but I'm all trapped in here with the wires but I have a Blues Junior before the kids went down for a nap I was like Katie I just need to make uh, my wife's name's Katie I was like I just need to uh, make some loud noise and just test these out uh, in a real amp and they sound amazing. It, it took it, it took it amazingly. So, uh, if you are an amp person, you still want an amp and you have an HX effects. Um, there's also the expanse pack for, for the HX effects. So it's a, it's a lot smaller. Um, and there's some things that are only on the HX effects that aren't included on these. Some of my favorites, kind of like a favorites list that you can either copy and paste or whatever. So, uh, yeah, if you want to check that out, you can make sure I didn't miss any of the comments here. North Alabama, Alan, it's it's a line eight. Greetings from Chile. What time is it in Chile? We might be in the same time zone. I don't know. Very cool. Well, let me plug it up. Um, tell you, make sure y'all can hear it, and uh, I'll tell you the the signal chain. Well, I already told you the signal chain, but I'll tell you what's what's in each of the things. So here's clean tone. Nothing but the amps. Well, let me just tell you what it is. I have the uh, overdrives there are like six overdrives i'm going to pull up somebody was asking me today on instagram or comment somewhere and was like are, are the overdrives in the in the helix stuff any good or should i go external if you know my other board i have some external i have an external overdrive um but the overdrives in the stomp the helix stuff is amazing 10 40 p.m thanks for staying up so late man what's up delroy how's it going long time no see Sorry, I just got here. When did you get this, Mr. A? Yeah, so I got all this stuff um, like about a month ago is when I got it all. So I got it all at the same time. Guy gave me a really good deal. Um, the amps that I'm running through the, uh, the HX stump. So I got overdrives. Then I come up here. This is modulation. I got six different courses and, and tremolo and vibes and stuff we'll go through. This is my HX stump here running the dual amps. Um, preset from the expanse pack all the stuff's in the expanse pack and then all this DSP is just reserved for uh, four delays and a bunch of different reverbs so we're gonna play through it so here is the clean signal y'all let me know uh, if it you can hear it if it's clipping or not No clipping. Good. Awesome. So what I want to do is just, uh, man, why I wired all this up. So how much DSP? We have two DSP chips here. We have a DSP chip here, here, and here. And so we have, what, five Helix DSP chips. Somebody said, you're going to break the, the internet or something. Somebody else said, you're going to, what was it? You're going to um, rip, a, rip a hole in the space-time continuum. Maybe we will. Anyways, sounding great. <laughs> I'm gonna keep muting this because there's nothing worse than hearing the strings clip. 
But y'all let me know what you want to hear. I'll, I'll go through some sounds. If you want to hear something specific or ask me any questions, feel free to. I don't have a close up, but um, I'm going to do the, uh, this is a tube screamer here in the, the one position. <laughs> Move it around here. Tube screamer, the Scream 808, the Air Apparent, which is one of my favorites, Minotaur, the Timmy. This one's the, uh, what is it, the Deranged Master or something? And then the uh, OCD. And I have these dialed in really heavily. So here we go, I'll just go through them so you can hear them. There it is clean. Here's some room reverb. A little slap back reverb. Put some reverb. Oh, this is the first time I've had anybody ask me for reverb. I've had people in my videos say, dude, we can't even hear the amps or the drives because there's so much reverb. That's a DSP buffet. May I ask why you chose the LT and not the full floor? Does the, ET, does the LT feel as rugged as the stomp? Yeah, the LT feels great. I didn't like I, I was just talking about, I wasn't even shopping for the full Helix. I just got a really good deal. So I didn't have to make a decision full floor versus LT because this is what was available uh, with the guy who was giving me a deal. And I was like, ah, that's a pretty good deal. I should take it. So um, I have a friend of mine, Graham, who has the full one. It's, it's a lot bigger. Uh, I have a really small space here. I can't believe I even got it all on here. But um, yeah, I, there's no need for me to have the full one. I think you get different routing options. I think there's two more foot switches, but um, yeah, this one feels pretty good. Uh, the volume pedal I hear is a little weaker on the LT, but kinda kind of squeaks a little bit, but it's not much, I don't think you would hear it live. Um, yeah, so I love that Tube Screamer sound. Let's hear it some more. parent uh, Minotaur I have all these dialed in pretty similar. This is the Timmy. It's not muting my mic. Oh, it's not? So you guys can still hear me when I mute it? Can you hear this? I see the bar. Max it. Max out the reverb. Yeah, I don't know. It, that says it's muted right there. Sorry, then I won't worry about muting it and unmuting it. But I just hate being able to hear the strings clicking. If it's annoying, then I don't know why it's not. It says it's muted. But anyways. So I don't have these um, dialed in with a lot of gain. I dialed them. I dialed them in the way I would dial them in with an amp, and then I, I stack overdrive sometimes. Uh, and I also gain up the amp, which I don't have that here today. But here's a little more reverb. This is the dynamic hall. Deranged Master. That's right, Delroy from Florida. That's where I was born. I was born in Tampa. Represent Florida. Is there a college team, college football team you like better than others? Yeah, so this is an overdrive I have not used that much. The Deranged Master. I hope I'm saying that right. It's kind of abbreviated and I didn't remember the name, but um, it's got a lot of grit to it and I, I, I really like it. And 
And then here's the OCD, just super beefy. Justin Zach, Texas. Awesome, man. What part of Texas? So next, let's go over to some modulation. I think Clapton used the Range Master. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I really, I really like it. It can get, it can get real beefy. Oh, what did I just do? Home. Here's the air apparent with, uh, I'll, I'll stack a few of them. the uh, Scream 808. So there's the two Screamer and the Minotaur, which I, I like that sound too. It's a little more mid, mid ranging. <laughs> something clean put it on the fourth position and do some uh, some chorus let's see what here this is my this is the Trinity chorus I saw a video the other day um, I was looking up like how to play how to play synth wave guitar I've been listening to a band called the midnight and I just love the throwback 80s 90s sound what amp sim are you going into again so I'm using the um, the dual amps it's the matchstick channel one and uh, I got a split going two different um, paths with the, this is basically just like the dual amps in my um, expanse pack. So if you have that, you can check it out. But uh, I also made a video on me making this, but on the top on path A, it's the matchstick with a matchless, uh, the G25 cab. And there's actually two of those, which is something I like to do. It's the, the two cabs. And then I blend them with two different mics. And so the mics are the the ribbon, the 160 ribbon. Actually, no, this one is a single cab. Sorry, I was looking at the wrong thing. So this is just a single cab because on the second line, I have another matchstick, um, channel one. And the drives are at 2.5. And, uh, and then I might as well get into it now since we're talking about the amps. I was going to talk about it in a second. But um, I saw a video where I was on Chad Boston's website, the SIBO, SIBO skins or whatever, because I was looking to maybe put some skins on this. This is a little scratched up. Um, and I was just surfing around. He's got a lot of very cool resources on there. And somewhere, I can't even remember how I got there, but there was a video of someone else named Chad talking about something he learned from Chad Boston about using a EQ block instead of a cab, like to replace a cab. And he walked through the settings and so uh, I've actually been playing around with that and you're hearing that now. So what I have is uh, on the B path is that parametric EQ uh, with those settings. And um, I should have plugged it up so you could just hear that. But if I mute it, it's gonna sound bad. Let's see. I could take level B and mute level B. We'll see if that works. I don't have everything hooked up to uh, HX Edit. Yeah, so that's, this sounds terrible because it's, let's just put it back. 
Anyways, I'm gonna make a video about it. So, but that's what you're hearing. It's the parametric EQ blended with um, the other cab, just the normal cab that comes with the matchstick. And so they're blended together. And um, what it does is it sounds, yeah, I know, it's a crazy idea. And I'll, I'll make a video about it going in, in greater depth because I can't really do it here and show you guys. But um, I really like the sound of the regular cabs because I use those all the time. The EQ block is a little like grittier, less polished. But then when you put them both together, you get like the range of all of them. And so it's like, it sounds, it sounds amazing. I love, I just love the way this sounds. It just sounds nice and full. Anyways, moving on, let's go to some, uh, some modulation. So this is the Trinity course. I was just talking about how I was watching a video and it just got me all pumped to try to get some 80 sounds. So one of the ways they were doing it was using the Trinity chorus. Um, but then stacking a bunch of courses together. So let's just let's just hear what we can do. Here's the Dimension Chorus, is the one I use a lot. Stack them. tone how many people are a fan of the the chorus on chorus for days let's see here I also have a, uh, a deluxe phaser it's a little more subtle bubble vibrato mixed with it Gray flanger. I like this one. I've been using this one live a lot. This and the dimension are my go to. Should we stack them all? All six modulation because we can. We have the DSP. Let's just stack everything. Oh, yeah, there was like a. What was it called? The. The Opto Tremolo. All right, so there's our chorus section. Um, what we didn't do was stack all the drives. Let's just stack all the drives. Too much. That's, that's very noisy. It's the OCD doing it. All right, let's hear some. Uh, let's hear some. Um, some more of the reverb. So here's a, here's one of the 
the tricks I like to do. Um, I have this one here. You can't really see it. It's purple, but it kind of has like this shimmery pad under. So it's not my pads preset, but it's just, anyways, you'll hear it. I'm gonna take the level down, or the mix down a little bit. Yeah, the Horizon. Um, I actually tried that one too. I, I, I went through them all, but I, I like that one as well. It's Yeah, it can get heavy. My subs loves the metal grit. Yeah, uh, same with my, um, the monitors I have. What are y'all's um, styles, your go-to style? Like I love the ambient stuff. That's just what I've always loved. Um, but yeah, we all come from different backgrounds. What, what styles do you guys love? Lo-fi hip hop, nice. Acoustic is still my favorite, but I like a lot of everything. What's up, Salisbury, North Carolina? Very nice. That's down there near Charlotte, I believe. What is it? East of Charlotte? I can't really remember. I've been there before. Let's hear some delays. We got the ping pong delay. So a lot of my stuff is is supposedly, you know, dialed in for worship tones, and they're they're stuff I use. And I'm trying to get more creative with my tones on on Sundays. I've been using the retro reel as well. Um, just to kind of add a little warbliness. That seriously sounds like intro to a hairband rock song. <laughs> hairband rock love song, exactly. I like the sound where it's like a big stadium or something. Have I tried the, yeah, the Euclidean delay? I have, I've messed with it. Um, I With my delays, I'm pretty simple. Like I literally use the simple delay a lot. Um, but I really like some of these other ones, so I pulled up some other ones. I use ping pong delay a lot just because I can get a, a kind of bounce back and forth with just one delay, which you can do that with multiples, but. another one um, that I'll use to, to parts just to kind of stick out in the mix and be a little, little different I don't overdo it I don't want it to sound ridiculous but if it fits in a song and it's just a, a little part uh, I like the rhythm and patterns oh yeah and you can, you can get crazy with that Euclidean delay it, it does so much um, and then one of my other favorite is the transistor tape 
I had this one set up quick because I was I was stacking them, but I like the transistor tape because it has the wow and flutter and I like my delays to have uh, a lot of that modulation. Here's the vintage digital. And then I used one, um, this is like one of the legacy, it's just called stereo delay. And I don't have the mix very far up. So let's stack them all together and see what we got. Justin's become a big fan of chorus lately, just a little topper for my tone. Yeah, me too. I've been throwing it in a little more and more, um, just almost kind of see what I can get away with and it still like serve the song. Um, is this out of focus? I don't know. Everything's out of focus. Yeah, I like that. All those delays, like four delays, I never have the DSP. I mean, I've been with the, the stomps. I've never had the DSP to run like this many effects and it still sound pretty good. I will also say that I'm a huge fan of reverb. I, I use a lot of reverb, but like that sounds like a super wet tone, but it's all coming from the delay because that's the only reverb I have on. And I've actually been using less reverb because I've been filling it with not much in the mix um, so it gets too muddy, but the delays can really um, fill up a lot of space in a good way, nice way. I tried the specular tempest reverb and delay it sounds really nice um no I had the specular reverb version 3 which is the same reverb from the specular tempest but it didn't have any of the delay except it had like seven algorithms and one of them was an echo and actually had a tap tempo that you could use so it did have one like delay feature that you could go to but um yeah so I, I did a shootout on the channel um, between the Jet Revelation, which is my favorite go-to reverb right now. It's on my board. Um, definitely check that out. And it, it's controllable via MIDI. Um, the Specular Reverb. I did a shootout between Jet, Specular Reverb, and then the, the Big Sky. And uh, they all sound great. Those are all, like, super good. And, um, yeah, you should go check that out. Uh, maybe I can link that down below later. You can go find it. Dude, my tune is super cool. Thanks, man. Michael, you're going to need one of those gargantuan temple trying to bars and mount all these things for Sunday morning. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes. Um, no, I'm never going to play all these at one time. But this Sunday, I am using this for the first time. I just had rehearsal last night with the full Helix, and I was going to let y'all know how I was using it. Um, do any of y'all have a Helix? Anybody who's in here? I'm trying to figure out how people who have it tend to use it, but uh, since I was moving over my expanse pack and trying to expand, I was trying to figure out the best way that I would set it up. And so how I'm using it, I like using snapshots per song, where I used to be presets per song. Um, and I'll go back and forth. I may go back to presets per song. But right now I'm trying out snapshots per song because of the spillover. Um, and so I, I like that. And because this even has more snapshots, I can just put in my song. So this past Sunday... Um, not this past Sunday, for this coming Sunday, last night, I had it in stomp snap mode. So the top four buttons are stomps and the bottom four are four snapshots. And those were my four songs. So it worked out perfectly for the set I was in. And mode, the mode switch takes you to full stomp mode relatively quickly, quickly so you can get to any of the other foot switches that you want to. So um, it's a lot more versatile than you know the, the units with less buttons. 
uh, less switches. So, but that's how I've been running it. Stomps on the top and uh, snapshots on the bottom. And I really liked it as a worship leader. I'm a worship leader, so I sing. I don't do a lot of lead. And so if I can just look down and see the title of the song and click that button and know I'm just going to the next song, that's super helpful. If I didn't program something the way I really wanted it, or I know I'm in, like, in that song, I still have my stops up top to, um, instead of scrolling through other snapshots, I can still like hit my overdrive or hit an extra reverb. And I put my four most important effects, because I don't tap dance more than that, on the top row. So I'll usually have like an overdrive boost, a, uh, a delay, a modulation, and a reverb all on the top row so that I can get those if I want them. Yeah. HX Stomp. Yeah, I know, a million. Oh, Bob, hey, just dropped in, asked anyone how many amps can get running at the same time. Oh, I haven't, I didn't try more. I'm just r running two amps right now. Uh, I didn't try to stack more than that, but I guess that would have been fun too. Um, or a million delays and reverbs, the possibilities are endless. Yeah, so um, I didn't actually fill this up. I just filled it up with the, the foot switches that I would need. Um, but yeah, I'm running eight, eight modulation blocks that I could stack all over here, the dual amps, and then there's actually seven or eight overdrives. There's two more that I don't have foot switches for in the HX effects. Um, but yeah, let's just stack some stuff. Let's just stack all the all the reverbs, all the delays, and most of the uh, most of the mod, and see what we got. <laughs> be clipping now keep stacking mods in time and you're gonna start sounding like bill from the cores of ryan yeah dude i watch that channel sometimes he's he's awesome the last one i i watched was an older video i don't know it like came up in the feed where he had his daughters pick out pedals like randomly off of his his kitchen table and uh and then he tried to make a pedal board out of it it's pretty fun so yeah that's um four reverbs no no it's four delays five reverbs and a pitch block from here um i got more stuff i can turn on oh here's the retro reel the plasti course those were two that i didn't have foot switches for so we just added those to it let's see <laughs> Yes, some massive swells. Let's see, somebody said it sounds clean. That's why I love multifags. Yes, I know. I was talking to somebody, I actually had two auditions, no, three auditions yesterday for my band, which is amazing. And one of the guys has been in the church forever and uh, realized that we were short an electric guitar player. And he was like, hey, I, I play electric guitar. Anyways, um, he like builds a lot of his own pedals and stuff and it was, it was cool, he had great tone. And uh, I was just telling him about I was playing through the Helix and I was like, yeah, it was my first time. And the cool thing about this is I love building pedal boards and having different pedals. I've done that for years and you can, you know, go down the, the rabbit hole of getting something and then wanting something else. Um, the cool thing about this, if you guys know me at all, I've never been an all in one person. I like having my own pedals, but I would have never been able to have access to all these effects and at least play around with them to know what I like. 
and they sound amazing. And on Sunday mornings when I play, no one out in the congregation knows whether the mics are, you know, of the amps are backstage or not, or if I'm I'm playing through one of these. And so at the end of the day, I'm like, this is this is, I would say good enough. It's it's better for me because I don't have to deal with all that other stuff. Does my front of house pan crossfade or sub amps to mono? Um, yeah, they're actually running me in stereo and our keyboard in stereo and to our in-ears, which has only been the last few weeks and that is amazing. I was like, y'all are responsible for how it sounds out there. <laughs> as long as it sounds good in my ears, I, I'm, I'm fine. Um, and so, uh, yeah, it's been sounding really good in my ears because I've been running stereo and um, yeah, sounds amazing. So they don't, they don't summit to mono. They've been playing around with it. We got a new sound system and it's, it's set up nicely for it. I know if your building's too wide or something, you can get some craziness and I don't know exactly because I'm not back there but um, I'm, I am running stereo Awesome. So, hey guys, what, um, those of you who are still here, uh, what is your like biggest need or biggest problem that you have with your tone? Do you guys love your tone all the time, or are you always searching for better tone? I mean, I'm always searching for ways that I can sound as good as I possibly can. But I know some people struggle with certain things. Like, is your biggest weakness dialing in reverbs? Is it dialing in the amps? Getting delays to sound right. Um, what what is it? What do y'all what do y'all sh struggle? Is it, if that's the right word? If you struggle with something, here is the retro reel. I want to hear the retro reel by itself. Got to go through and click off all of the effects that I have on. So I'll click off the retro reel and then I'll add it back. <laughs> I don't have this one dialed in as with my, my preset. So that's closer to what I've been using on Sundays. So it kind of takes the high end off a little bit and it adds a little bit of warbliness to it, but uh, I don't use it all the time, but I use it for certain songs just to change up my tone. Moving between monitoring setups, headphones, monitors, versus power cab, PA, and sometimes a headache. Yes, um, so that seems to be, those those who have filled out the um, the survey that I have online for the, the free preset, which I forgot to link it down below, but um, it's, I'm trying to figure out where it would be. I think it's on an older video. You can go check it out. But, um, well, there's a video that says free preset on it. So if you're interested in that, you can go check it out. But that was one of the main things that comes up. It's like, how do I dial in my presets at home? And then when I get to church, they, they don't sound good. And so some people say they sound thin when they get there. And other people say they sound muffled. So I think it's just one of the tips is, is monitoring as many ways as you can before you get there. So... I don't know, not everybody has access to studio monitors. I recently, in the last few months, got some and I'll, I'll test something with different headphones. I'll test it through um, the studio monitors on a real flat setting. And then I've even gone, because I have access to it, um, gone up to the church and run like the small, the portable PA systems um, and, and run stereo and play through that at a louder volume just to see how it's gonna come out. And then I, I play in my church. So I'll take it up there because I have access to my church and the soundboard. Um, I go up there and I, I make sure it sounds good. And I've had a lot of 
uh, success, I guess. I've enjoyed the fact that um, the tones I'm dialing in here sound amazing at church. So uh, some sometimes it's, you know, I'm like, oh, it, it may sound like a little, uh, like if it's, if it's if it does sound a little um, thin is what I'm trying to say. I, I have some, I'm trying to remember what it's called now. It's like an EQ block. I think it's the, the low and high shelf where it can add bass to it. It's in, it's in the several of the presets in the expanse pack. And sometimes I'll click that on or off. If I feel like it's too bass heavy or too muddy based on the different places that I play, I can click that off and it's like, Oh, it gives me a little bit of a, a toggle there to adjust my, um, like the saturation and how, um, bass heavy it is. Nope. Love it. Just practice more now. Yes. I need to practice as well. I need to be, I need to get better. I'll watch, um, what do you guys do for practice? I practice my songs. Um, but I also need to spend more time just like playing guitar and getting better at it, not playing the same thing over and over again. I've considered, um, what's his name? Paul David's guitar course. Cause I love his channel. I love his personality. He teaches me a lot just on his YouTube channel. Um, so yeah. How do y'all, how do y'all practice and get better at guitar? Friedman, man, that's a lot of good gear, Warren. Handful of good pedals, variety of mid-high end guitars. Justin, can you adjust the rate of modulation fairly easily? Um, yeah, I mean, you can. You can just go down and, and, and do it. But sometimes, uh, the guys over at Worship Tutorials, Brian and uh, Bradford specifically, likes tremolo, and they like uh, having a tremolo that ramps up. I was playing with that the other day where I used my expression pedal and I put that to the speed of the tremolo so I could control the ramping of it. So that's that's fun to play with sometimes. Bob, I currently use the Pod Go and recently I've been becoming a little unsatisfied with limitations of both foot switches and DSP. The reverbs I notice are also not the absolute best. Yeah, Bob, um, that's that's another piece of gear that I would like to get a hold of just because I've never played with it. Um, I get a lot of questions about it or people telling me, Hey, make presets for the pod go. Um, and it's not too terribly expensive. So it is in the, the plans when I feel like I want to spend money on it right now. My attention has been drawn to this, but I would like to, because, um, I would like to get it just to see what it can do, see what the limitations are and make good tones out of it with those limitations. I like that kind of challenge. One big key on the board is to make sure you don't add additional compression or gating on the soundboard if you have some built into your HX. Yes, I have that conversation with my sound guys and I have different sound guys all the time because they, they rotate volunteers in and out. Um, a gate, sometimes I like to put a gate on because they're used to amps being noisy but you don't have an amp so I usually just say, hey, let's just start from zero, start from scratch. Uh, hopefully you can have a good uh, dialogue with your sound guys and it, you know, sometimes I know that that relationship can be uh, intense or tense sometimes. Um, but if you can uh, work hard to have a good relationship with those guys, it'll really help. Um, but one way for me to explain it to them, why it's important is a lot of times I do swells. And if there's a gate on it, like you'll swell in and it doesn't pick up until boom. And then it's in and it takes the, the artistry and the beautifulness of your swells and just throws it out the window because it just doesn't pick it up until you're in. And so sometimes a gate can really, uh, mess those up and same with a, like a pad on a, um, on a keyboard. So watch Tom homeschooling lessons. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll check that out. I need to work on the basics again. I've looked at Paul David's course a couple of times too. Yeah. That's something, I mean, he's, he's a cool guy. I need to learn more. I've never actually taken lessons. I've always just learned from friends and what I needed to know. I've always learned backwards, which is not the best. Uh, I took a, a lesson one time and pretty much just watched the guy play guitar the whole time. And I thought, um, I don't, I don't want to do this. And I was motivated. So I, I taught myself how to play. The pod go is absolutely amazing for the price and it definitely gets the job done for sure. Just being spoiled. No, I get it. Yeah. What's cool is it, it also has the expression. I mean, I haven't played with it yet, but it's cool that you get all that in such a, a small package. Justin helps that I'm the sound guy. I somehow I'm always happy with that guy. says is what? It helps that I'm the, also the sound guy. <laughs> That's funny, dude. Justin Chan, what's up, man? Want to come on here earlier? Work came up watching while driving. Hey, I can't say I haven't done that as well. I'm going to have Justin on the channel. We've talked about it. 
We just, I haven't made it, made it happen because I've been busy. We're both busy people. Justin, I know you're busy. I'm busy too. Chorus. Yes, we have chorus. I will play some more. For those of you just jumping on, let's stack it all again. If you missed it, let's just make some, make some good tones. How many of you uh, use the Nashville numbers system on a regular basis? As a worship leader, I use it all the time. Sometimes I'm tuned my guitar down half a step and then I'll, I'll capo and so I'm like, oh, I'm trying to transpose and I'll just call it numbers. And some on my team are learning. They actually have done a really good job over the past few years. Everybody's pretty much learning. I got some new people I'm adding to the team and they, they understand the concept, but they were like, oh, I don't know if you threw out a number, if I'd know immediately, it depends on the key. So how many of you, uh, Use the Nashville number system often. Guthrie, Traps, and Tim Pierce lessons. I've heard of those names before. Another thing I work on is ear training. I use a desktop app called Transcribe. Full songs to work on ear training. Oh, okay, cool. I'll check that out as well. Yeah, that's something I, I work with my teams. I do uh, like workshops, especially with, with the bass players. Uh, I think it's easy to like hear kind of like the chords. I, I try to get get them to hear the progression of a song without even knowing what key it's in, see if they can pick up on the, on the numbers. Like once we know the Nashville number system, we'll work together to be like, okay, let's see if we can pick out this progression because that's what I do in my car all the time. I'm listening, like when I'm, when I'm practicing, um, Michael, you're starting Rhett Scholl's Nashville number course. Awesome. Yeah, I know he does courses too. I'd love to, to get your feedback on that, see how it is. Um, yeah, so... Ear training is is the best because even if you need to look at a chord chart, like if you don't have a chord chart or, you know, you can always pick something up. And so I'm always practicing that. And some, some songs are a lot more difficult than others, but a lot of times worship songs are pretty easy with the chord progression. So they're they're pretty easy to pick out unless you're not used to hearing like the slash chords in the, in the bass. But um, for some reason, bass is like the, the thing I hear the most and so my bass players i'm always i'm always joking with i'm like for some reason as a worship leader it's the bass i hear i hear first that's like the foundation for me so as a vocalist too if the bass is off um then i i, I get off it makes me feel uncomfortable and i think it makes the uh it makes the um, congregation uncomfortable as well <laughs> So for those of you who are here, um, one of the things I do for the Nashville number system, maybe I should take my, I don't need to be on here too much longer actually, but since you're here, um, one of the things I, I don't teach lessons, but when I just am with my, my band and stuff, uh, I, I look at the guitar as a, um, make sure I don't need too many effects on. I use like the, I'm very visual. And so I use the T and L rule. So like the one, let's just say we're in G. Boom. Does that look good to you guys? I visualize the an L with the um, the numbers one being your home, and then four, five, six. Those are the those are the numbers I, I lock in first, and then I'll add the two and the three later, and the seven every if we need it. Um, and so I think about the uh, as an L. So first fret, you go down a string, and you're right to the four. Two frets up, you're to the five. Two more frets up, you're to the six. And it kind of, it makes an L. And so if somebody were to say, a vocalist was like, and I don't have a capo, and they're like, oh, I'm, we, we played this song that is, you know, the one, five, four, six. And they're like, oh, that's a half step too low. Well, if nothing else, I can pick bar chords. And so knowing those shapes and knowing the numbers, uh, it doesn't matter where on the fretboard you are as a guitar player, you can always play the key. It may not be the shapes that you want to play, um, but understanding the Nashville number system, understanding where those numbers are on the fretboard has been super helpful for me 
as a worship leader, as a guitar player. So you can always just take whatever progression it is and just move it around with bar chords, if nothing else. If it's a weird key, like, I don't know, somebody give me a weird key, B flat. So, so there's B flat. Yeah, so that's, that's why uh, it's important. The other thing I, I teach them is that not only the L shapes, because that works if your note is on the top string or the bottom string, um, but let's say your note is on the A string, you can use T shapes to memorize it. So let's say we're in the key of E. I know that E is on the seventh fret, and then my four, five, six makes a T. So I go back two frets, up two frets, up two frets for the four, five, six. So one, four, five, six, one, four, five, six. So, and they're like, oh, I wanna play an F. Oh, I just move it up. Except I forgot my chord progression. Or let's move it down to C sharp. And if you know your song and you've listened to it, um, then you can play any song in any key with just a little bit of practice. Anyways, cool. Have you ever played around with trying to pick out notes referencing songs or parts of songs you know well? A kind of perfect pitch. Yes, I tried that. I don't have perfect pitch. I'm not good at that. That's the one thing I, I tell my guys. It's like one thing you can do is try to hear like the progression of a song. And, and I try myself on like guessing a key of a song like i know my vocal range it's like certain times of the day like i can sing a low e uh, barely and so if it's below that i know it might be like e flat or something <laughs> but i can't do it in my head no i'm not i'm not good at that transcribe is cool because you can change pitch and time down to 10 percent great for old blues songs where the guitar wasn't in tune yeah that's that's true Completely agree with the bass comments, Justin. A good bassist is very underappreciated in worship bands. That is true. I don't know why. I know it's always like the guy, you know, a band is like three guitar players and the worst guitar player has to be the bass player or something. But I think it's cool to play bass. Like if I wasn't a singer and I wasn't the lead, obviously I'd want to play lead guitar. But next, I'd want to be a bass player and then drummer. And I would love to play keys. I'd love to do it all. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out. I just wanted to update you guys, let you guys know that the Expanse packs are out. I wanted to try this and just stack everything and it's crazy how clean it all is. Like it's, there's the volume. I have an overdrive on too. Like it's perfectly clean. You can stack all these units and get a super clean signal, which I didn't know that was gonna happen. I thought it'd be noisy or something, but it sounds amazing. I'll play a little bit more on my way out and then I gotta go to bed, guys. I gotta go to bed.
leave you with it. See you.